All right, so I'm here in the shade with Kelsey Stevenson, who anybody who follows you know my website sees his name every single day, every single week, in an ITF somewhere on the other side of the world. I've just watched him play live in person. He's qualified for the Challenger. Oh no, we're on his first round at yeah, the Challenger here. Last round of boys. First round, last round of qualies yeah. here in Granby. And this is what he looks like. <laughs> for those of you who wonder, I have some videos. Got a one-handed backhand. Pretty sweet. So the question I get often about you, which is strange because sometimes people just get interested in things, is how do you do it? You've been at this a while. How do you manage it? <laughs> uh, you got to love it. You got to be a little crazy as well <laughs> to, uh, to pursue something for, for as long as I did. I also been uh, a little unfortunate with uh, a lot of surgeries and stuff like that, which have uh, sort of sent me back. I had surgery in uh, five, five places in my elbow. Yeah, so not, 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 not five. No. Do you want to, do you want to uh, enumerate them? <laughs> so it was, it was pretty much, one was a full broken arm. The other ones were just uh, uh, fractures in the bones. And so they had to do, go in. The uh, first one was a broken one. It was The first one was actually just before I started tennis. But um, and then uh, they had to go in and do mi microscopic uh, surgery and uh, repair fractures in my, in my elbows as well because uh, of overuse. So it's like... It's been, uh, it hasn't been easy, but that's also part of the reason why I have continued to play because I've had so many setbacks and, uh, and I wanted to give myself the best shot, but it's been tough. And, and I mean, I did, uh, I did take a break for a little while and uh, I coached uh, at University of Tennis in the States. Where? What school? Um, is that a small uh, Division II school called Young Harris? Um, in which state? Yeah, it was, it was in uh, North Georgia. North Georgia? Yeah, yeah. So, so I was there for a little while, just, uh, and I wasn't injured at that point, but I just uh, I took a step back in tennis. And, uh, after that, I, that was when I was, I think, 28. Um, after that, I came back um, a little while later, mid, mid uh, to late 2019. Started doing well again, won and a bunch of, won, won some singles title in, uh, in the futures, won a bunch of doubles titles. And then what happened? And then COVID. So it's like, it's, it, it, it's been a little bit of a rocky, rocky ride for me. And I just haven't really got to, if anyone wanted to look at my, my, my records, I'll play for four or five, six months. And then you won't see my name anywhere for about four, four to five months mm -hmm. as well because of all these different things. I've also had a torn rotator cuff in my shoulder. Oh! This, this displacement in my back. Um, so you're stubborn and crazy. Yeah, stubborn and crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you can put it that way. <laughs> Well, people around you, you seem to have made about 52 friends around here already, and I noticed, even on the court, uh, apologizing for your slight mishits uh, and, and and warning the people on the next court that the ball was coming over. Yeah, yeah. And basically, you look like the nicest guy on the planet out there. I mean, Does that help you win friends around the world when you're all in all these I random mean, places? The, the way I see it is, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's a it's just a game. Um, I love I love the game, but. I feel like you have to have respect for your opponents and you also have to have respect for the other people that are around. And I mean, of course, there's a couple of words that I sometimes say probably... The, the good ones. Wrong, yeah. wrong, but wrong as well towards, towards umpires. Or, uh, and, uh, and I make sure to apologize after because I mean, I think everybody is human and they can make mistakes. But, uh, I try, I try to just uh, be treated the way that I want to be treated as well. And you don't always get that in return, but I mean... Yeah, yeah but you don't, you don't do it to get it back. No, yeah. no. So, I mean, you, you got to just, uh, just go with the flow and hopefully, hopefully people are going to be respectful back to you. You mentioned that you had grown up in Asia. What? When did? How long were you there for? Was it was that your father's work or something like that? So, so we moved actually to uh, China when I was uh, five or six years old. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't start playing tennis at that point. Um, I moved there to to uh, my dad worked with Procter and Gamble, and he. Uh, he was sent there to help open one of the uh, factories. And, uh, so we were there for I think four, four years. And then we moved to, we moved to Thailand. Um, and Thailand's where I started tennis. So I moved after I arrived there when I was about So I started tennis around 10 years old. And, uh, and yeah, so I was, I was there for about nine years. 
eight, nine years. Um, left, left there to go and pursue a little bit more tennis in uh, Spain and Italy. And then ended up back in Thailand with, uh, with one of the coaches, coaches that actually helped me, helped me most, his name is uh, Paul Dale. And uh, yeah, he, he helped me quite a bit and uh, so I moved back and uh, I was there for another three years. And then like, over the past <laughs> seven, eight years, it's been a You've been to bit. every Futures factory on the planet. <laughs> oh yeah, Futures, Futures, and now, now, uh, now that my doubles ranking, I'm, I'm pushing more in doubles now. I signed in for singles when I had a chance. But I'm trying to make a little bit more. So when you're in Canada, that's actually a bizarre thing for you, even though you're a Canadian. I, yeah, I don't really feel as, as, as much. Like, I love, I love Canada. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my family, a lot of my family's here. Um, but I, I feel almost more comfortable when I'm abroad sometimes. <laughs> How many languages do you speak? Actually, just uh, right now, just only Thai and English. Oh, well. I, I, I could speak a little bit of Chinese when I was growing up, but uh, when I was younger, but then moved to Thailand and uh, we, didn't, we didn't use it at all, so then I forgot, forgot that, and now I speak uh, Thai and English. So what keeps you going? It's not the money. No, no. Obviously, I don't even know how you even manage. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've coached a little, uh, little bit. Uh, family do help support, support it, uh, a little bit as well. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, like I said, I, I was an assistant coach, but I did it as a volunteer. And then after that, I, I went to Singapore, where my, where my brother is. And my, my family actually moved there after. And, uh, and yeah, there's young kids that I could help out a little bit. And, so basically it's all about feeding the habit, feeding the tennis yeah, habit, yeah, right? Tennis habit. I mean, I, this is the first time that I've, I've decided to push for doubles um, in the last, since, since I started. And uh, hopefully that can, it's been going well so far. Um, yeah, I noticed there was, I, the challenge was at uh, Winnipeg. One, yeah, yeah, one Winnipeg. Um, made an extra in, in 25,000 and stuff. Uh, I made a bunch, a bunch more points there as well. So now I'm, I should hopefully be sneaking into main draw of all challenges for doubles now. Um, and uh, and then things like free accommodation at challenges do help. Um, yeah, that's a level up. That's a game yeah, changer. Yeah, exactly. Because I think that's one of the biggest, the biggest expenses for us. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are a lot, there are a lot of guys that you like you were out there who just absolutely just love it and yeah. live for it. Yeah. And it's and you and you look at people's rankings yeah. and you look at how good they are yeah. and you go, well, how is that even that's, possible? Yeah. But that's how tough it is. Yeah. Is that something that you kind of realized before you started, or only fully realized when you were all in? Uh, I think you you realize it more and more as, as as you go on, but at the same time, you realize that on any given day. Um, almost anyone's beatable, you know? Um, so it's like, I, I feel like that's kind of the issue as well, you know? Because it's like, you can have a great match and almost beat a guy top 50 in the world, which it make, makes you think that you're just about there, but you're still... And the next light. day reality yeah. hits you. <laughs> and then and then I have a match like today where I feel completely just out of it and not, not able to uh, really compete the same way. Yeah, but you but, won it. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I, yeah, I won it. So I mean, you gotta be happy and then kind of learn from learn from uh, the bad days as well, you know. And and turn the page on them as yeah, quickly exactly, as you can. Exactly. So I'll probably go out and I'll probably hit for 20, 30 minutes in the afternoon, hopefully just to shake off a little bit of the, <laughs> bit of that. Of the uglies. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, great. Listen, thanks for taking the time yeah, and, no uh, and uh, in much. introduce everybody yeah. to Kelsey Stevens. Thank, thank you very much, Stephanie. <laughs>